splining, but you kind of want to just push in and roll. Don't go like a pizza roller. Don't do not do that. <laughs> you will you will you just cut it. Hey guys, this is a quick uh, DIY of doing your window meshes. It's summertime. If you have kids or pets, they tend to tear through these things. Uh, these are the meshes I'm replacing. The everything's fairly easy to do. You buy the mesh. I went to Lowe's actually, and um, I got uh, roller mesh here. Um, fiberglass is what I got. They also sell aluminum, but the fiberglass is really cheap. This roll, it's uh, five dollars, <laughs> so it was really really cheap, and I. You get a lot, 84 inches by 36 inches, and this is, should do about four windows. I got two of these rolls. I also got a spline tool, which is the most expensive thing I got. This was eight dollars, um, standard sp spline tool, and I got. Um, I wasn't sure of my spline size, so I got a variety pack. If you're in doubt, 16 is what I have, and 16 seems to be a standard, industry standard for these frames. I'm not sure why there's other sizes, um, but at my lows the 16 was all gone so i was just left with buying a variety pack it was like about four dollars um, um even on this it says to get the 16.16 inch spline utility knife definitely needed spline tool um I realized when i took the old spline off the original installer just um didn't cut the spline at all just like roped it around and then went around it and I realized the spline literally came right off. It wasn't even embedded in there properly. The mesh was secure, but when you do it that way, you see the corner there? It tends to come out easier. So what I did was I cut my spline into four bits. And I'm going to do this side first. And I'm going to come over here. And stretch it out like that. And then run my spline in there as it's stretched out. So I'm going um, opposite ends. And I'm going to come on this side. Put my spline in there. Make sure it's firm. And then the last edge is going to be here, so I'm going to just pull it where the roll is and make sure it's nice and taut and then run my spline in there and then you get a nice tight mesh. The trick with this is the spline. It has a convex end and a concave end. With the spline tool, when you go in the... I think there's a ladybug in there. <laughs> I got a ladybug or something. When you go in, this is these are going to be really sharp I want to go very easy and you kind of want to go towards the outside because this will cut the mesh and what ended up happening the first time I did this I had a nice slit along the mesh there I didn't realize it until after I put the um, the frame back in the window so it's really easy to to cut the mesh and the fiberglass is very the benefits of it is very easy to, manu to use to manipulate to put over the mesh and stretch over it but uh, more so than aluminum which is rigid and more durable but it cuts real easy so be careful with this or you'll be doing a window multiple times if you keep cutting it and the, f the weird thing when you cut it at the edges it just tears real easy from the edges and pushes it it's just going right up the, the um, edge right there so what I do is you kind of want to push in make, always make sure you have the right side because the convex won't do anything but the concave would um, push the spline in but you kind of want to just push in and roll. Don't go like a pizza roller. Don't do not do that. <laughs> you will you will you just cut it. Unless you have a plastic one or one that it might be an anti-cut spline. I'm not sure if they sell those. But just push in and just take your time with this. So with that side in, I'm gonna take my my convex end, the pointy end, uh, the point the side is not a cave. I'm gonna make sure it's stretched out over the frame stretch it out over the frame and I'm gonna just run it my channel in there this is only recommended for the aluminum meshes but I find it helps with the fiberglass mesh as well with this material because it creates a nice channel in there and I could just put my spline in boom so it's taut over the frame but what I like about the fiberglass it, it's very easy to manipulate manipulate and it pretty much stretches well over the frame I'm not sure how the aluminum is, but I heard the aluminum is a bit more challenging to get a nice um, flat um, firmness over the frame. And I'm going to take my convex end right here and be very careful, You're just pushing in. It's not a pizza roll cutter. It's not a pizza cutter. <laughs> so you don't want to do like a pizza cutter and just go up and down like that. You just want to push in gently. And that's the biggest tip I realize a lot of videos on doing this doesn't say. 
even the instructions that come with this kit, it doesn't say to push in instead of pizza rolling it across a pizza. Like you're not cutting a slice of pizza here. So push in, and if in doubt, just point it outwards. Don't point it inwards because the edges will cut the, the mesh. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so this is the last corner I'm doing. I used the roll actually to help me make it taut. Now I find holding the spline at the tip here and then rolling down as you push in helps. Remember, this is not a pizza cutter. You're not cutting pizza here. <laughs> You're just doing a nice tuck in, tucking it in. So I'm holding this tight with this hand as I'm coming down and, and tucking it in. And you kind of want to go out towards that way because if you come into the mesh, you can cut that. You don't want to cut this part yet. See, I'm stretching my spline here. So it's nice and tight. So I got a nice stretch. Even I have a little extra piece there, that's good. So once I'm done and it's seated, I'm gonna just go slowly up. And back down. And that's that, guys. This should be on. I'm gonna just take my scissors. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? What I like to do is just use my X-Acto knife. Come down and outside here and cut it off. This part is also tricky too. If you have a plastic frame, you wanna be careful not to cut it with this. Um, there's no guideline on how close to cut to the spline or close to cut to the edge of the frame. But um, just use your best judgment. Like I said, if you have a plastic frame or a softer frame, our frame here is aluminum. So it's just gonna leave a scratch. And I can also always paint over it or something or to repair it, but so the scratch doesn't rust or anything like that. So you wanna cut away from the center of the, um, you don't wanna cut anywhere near that. So also don't cut your hands. It's really easy to cut your hands doing this. It's really easy to come in on that mesh. I'm just gonna come down slowly on that. This is probably one of the trickiest part of this too. There's two types of labor, physical and mental. And this is a bit of both physical and mental. So you wanna um, keep your mental concentration doing most of this. Don't rush it. You don't wanna rush through it. And um, you don't wanna tire yourself out because if I don't have a work table, I'm on my knees a lot so and it's as you see there, the sun is creeping up in my backyard to me, so I have about maybe uh, 10 minutes of sun and it's 90 degrees today, so I have about 10 minutes of sunlight. It's like I'm a vampire, the sun is coming for me. I'm gonna cut the extra trim off of there with my scissors and then use my X-Acto knife to, um, to make it nice and um, clean, clean looking. Because this part faces outside, it doesn't face inside on this, on this particular um, frame, so people outside will see See that I don't want it to look, you know, cheap. Guys, this is a before and after. Um, see the before the um, my kids ripped through this mesh. <laughs> my son likes to push through it. Um, fairly easy to do. It took me about 10 minutes. Um, remember, keep your mental concentration when cutting the new mesh and when um, finishing inserting the spline because it's really easy to cut the new mesh, especially if you're using a fiberglass mesh. Uh, you could re reuse the old spline, um, spline versus the new spline. It's all weathered and gray, um, and it's not soft anymore. It's kind of hard and brittle. So I won't recommend reusing your own old spline. These are really cheap anyway. Uh, a pack of those is like three, five dollars, depending on where you live. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, what do you guys think? Real easy to do. Just mental concentration and physical kind of stamina <laughs> is needed for this. It's a little blunt, but. Once you get that, removing the old spine is as easy as that. It should come right out. And this actually looks like they glued this on. <laughs> it wasn't even on. Um, it's not even a spline. It's just a piece of rubber tube. And it, oh yeah, see what I mean? This guy installed this just one big loop around, which I don't recommend.
so that comes right off. And then this guy will be ready for a new mesh. Look at that. That's how easy that is. So I use a dental pick to get that. Ah, oh, I hate this. <laughs> I ran out that much. <laughs> so this is pretty much garbage. Ah, oh. ah. Oh.